Hey, it's me again. I've got a few uh, buys to show you. I've got some more birthday books to show you today. Um, basically, I'm not sure if you've seen my other videos. Uh, I've I've started collecting books that came out the same month and year that I did. So the cover dated September 1969 is what I'm looking for. Because I never really owned many or any old books really. Certainly not before. I might have one or two maybe that I'm not aware of from before I was born. But I only used to collect like monthly the titles that I liked. And I never went back and bought old books particularly. Only stuff that I missed maybe during my lifetime kind of thing. I never sort of went back and bought any old Silver Ages or anything like that. Um, you know, which I wish I had started doing actually. If I started doing that 30 years ago when I was first collecting, I probably would have got lots of cheap stuff. But yeah, I've only ever really collected from within my own life kind of thing. So I started collecting some birthday books that came out on my birthday. So I've got a couple more that I went out and bought recently at Krypton Comics. It was quite weird. I started posting up about my comics on um, Facebook and someone I know from a band that I like, uh, he said, oh, do you go to Krypton Comics and what in uh, Black Horse Lane? And I was like, what, Black Horse Lane in Walthamstow? Because I've lived Leightonstone, which is near Walthamstow, for um, ages, years, decades, and uh, I never knew that this uh, place was there. And it's right near the pub, the Royal Standard, where I used to put gigs on back at the end of the 90s. The late 90s, I used to do Monday night gigs called the Brain Dead Club, heavy metal gigs at this uh, venue, and we'd do all dayers and all that, and I never even knew the place was there. But I'm um, thinking about this thing, he said 20... He might have even been there while I was doing that club and I never realised it. But anyway, I've discovered it now, so I know where to go for future purchases. Okay, so first up, I've got this one. Adventure Comics, September 1969. Supergirl starring in Adventure Comics. Yeah, looks cool. It's another DC title. I was thinking of getting the DC titles, all the birthday DC titles first, and then moving on to the Marvel. But I've actually picked up a Marvel one as well to her the other day. So let's have a look at the other ones. So this, is, this next one is the most expensive comic I've ever pay, paid for, actually. £18.75. What's that, $20 maybe? <laughs> That's nothing to some of the serious collectors whose channels I've been following. But uh, yeah, to me it was like, oh, expensive. That's, uh, you know, I was always whatever, paid whatever the monthly normal price was, if you know what I mean. So, uh, I, just, I don't know, is it? It's a good book anyway, I wanted it, so I'm not going to... I mean, I'm still saving up for the, the big books from my birthday. Uh, September 1969 was the first showing in Captain America 117 of Falcon. So that's kind of like a, a book, that, I think it's called a Grail book, but I can't, I've heard, heard people talk about Grail books, but I'm not sure if I've misunderstood what Grail books are. I assumed it meant like the Holy Grail, a book that you're searching for. And uh, so if it does mean that, then that is one of my Grail books is uh, Captain America 117. So I say, it's Ray, uh, Falcon, I keep trying to say Raven, Falcon shares his birthday with me. Also, Vampirella number one came out in September 1969, and that's uh, quite an expensive book as well. I think it's Warren Comics, but that's another uh, book that I'm certainly going to be looking for. And then here we have uh, my first uh, Marvel birthday book, September 1969. Actually, I've not actually seen it on the cover, actually. He said, he said it was going to be on the cover. Hopefully, it's behind the price there. Yeah, it does say September. Yeah, September 1969. Daredevil number 56, is that? Yeah, on the front there. Issue number 56. There you go. So, that's the birthday books I got this time around. I'm thinking of starting a podcast about my birthday books. Just, just uh, basically going through the book and giving them my impressions of it. Read through the book, almost. And like describe the panels to people and uh, talk about the adverts, talk about the, the writers and the artists, that kind of thing. I'm thinking about starting a podcast for that because uh, I've been looking at trying to do a geeky podcast for ages, but not really knowing what I could do it about. Uh, so yeah, I may well do it as well about my birthday books or just some old books in, in, in general. Really. Maybe I'll start with my birthday books, see how it goes. But I've got about, I think I've got eight now. If I did a monthly podcast, that's almost, that's, you know, almost two thirds of a year for taking up. Uh, I think a weekly podcast might be too too quick. I think a monthly one would be, would be better. But anyway, so those are the, my birthday books. I'm just gonna add another little pile that I brought in there. He had a 50, he had a 50p pile, and uh, I thought I'd pick up a couple of comics for 50p. This one, Jim, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. It's not in good nick, as you can tell, see the massive nick there at the bottom of it. But for 50p, it was, I was actually thinking about Jimmy, because uh, I was, Looking at people's posts and that, I've seen a lot of Jimmy Olsen. I always thought, what, what a sort of quirky kind of comic book that is. Like, it's of its time. You wouldn't get, like, 
Superman's pal, you know, nowadays, I don't think. It just, it's just and it, it ran for a hell of a long time as well. This is number 84, but it goes up into the hundreds. And it just strikes me that, you know, you'd never get a book like that nowadays. I don't think so. You wouldn't get Spider-Man's pal, Flash, whatever his name is. Uh, and he'd have him might have a comic run for hundreds of issues. It just wouldn't happen. Because <laughs> also, along with Superman's Power, there was also uh, Superman's, was it Superman's Power, Lois Lane, was that the title of that one? And that ran for hundreds of books as well. But yeah, it's quite a... I'm not sure what year this is, actually. I've not actually looked inside it. Uh, I only bought it on the weekend, just a couple of days ago. So you can see the cover's not very well aligned. But for 50p, I thought, well, that's an old book. I've never had the... Uh, any Jimmy Olsen books before? And I thought, sorry, it 50p. Yeah, why not? Just for the just for the novelty of it. And then, interesting. This is a comic I was actually talking about and posting about on Facebook the other day. This is a uh, Alan Moore Swamp Thing run number 45. Now, the reason I was talking about it is because I watched that horror film. Uh, that, is it Winchester? Is it called? Based in a, a haunted house run by the the family, the woman who well, whose family made the Winchester rifles. They were responsible for like obviously shooting lots of people. That's what rifles are made for. They're not made for knocking nails into wood. They're uh, they're for shooting and killing people. So um, yeah, she was kind of haunted by the ghosts of those who were killed by the rifles. Uh, and this story by Ellen Moore basically references that true life story of the the Winchester house. What it was that. Um, she had people working 24 hours a day, building new parts of the house, adding on wings, creating new rooms. She had, the thing was like the hammers, the hammers must never stop in the building, like the hammers never stopped on, on the guns uh, firing kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, um, Alan Moore changed the name of the, the family, uh, of the gun companies, whatever. But yeah, it's definitely reference to uh, that movie, you yeah, know, and the story behind the movie. So I just wondered if that would have been, you know, worth more money now because of the fact that it was kind of tied in with that movie somehow. I don't think it would do, but I just like that book anyway. I'm glad to have that. I've got, I haven't got many old Swamp Things from this one. I've only got a couple. I actually showed them in one of my Counting Comics uh, videos the other day. I've only got very few of them. I've got most of the, I think I've got all the Alan Moore running, um, what are they called? Graphic novels, they call them? No, like, you know, compiled works or whatever you call it. Trade paperbacks or something like that. Right, so I've got that one for 50p. I was rather, rather pleased with that. Uh, Legion of Superheroes Annual. Uh, not never been massively into Legion of Superheroes. There's some of the characters I like the look of. I always liked the look of Wildfire. I always thought he looked cool. Timberwolf, uh, yeah, pretty cool. But uh, yeah, it was a, it's an annual, so it's bound to be a complete story in there, and it's in reasonable good, good condition. Looks all right, 50p. I'm not going to complain about that. And this one, Convergence, Just Society of America. Now, um, oh, it's one of two. I forgot there were two parters. Oh, uh, what a try. Uh, yeah. Yeah, basically, I, read, um, I stopped collecting. I stopped collecting back in 2013, but I managed to catch up on some of these online. Uh, someone pointed me in the direction of a site where you can read comics online. It's a bit cheating, but like, if you just want to read the stories and not collect anymore, then you can still do it there. And I actually read uh, that story online. I thought it was a good story, so I thought I'd buy it, but then I realised it's only number one of two. I haven't got part two of two. Never mind. Uh, this next little uh, set of books, uh, a character from Marvel Comics UK called Death Metal. I do, a, I do a heavy metal podcast, and I'm very much into heavy metal and gigs. And I was actually talking about this uh, character, Death Metal, because there's a style of uh, extreme metal called Death Metal, the really heavy, uh, dark, nasty uh, music that I listen to. And uh, I did a podcast, I uh, did a superhero special, and I mentioned uh, on the show that there's a character called Death Metal, and I just happened to see the first four parts of this uh, Death Metal book uh, in this shop, 50p each, and I thought, yeah, why not? I don't recognise the artist's name, is it Robin Riggs or something? John Doyle, maybe? Royal? John Roy uh, no one, no one, no one well known, but I, liked, I just thought, yeah, it's cool. I just spoken about it on my my heavy metal podcast, <laughs> so I thought it'd be quite cool to read the comics. So that's death four four issues of death metal there. Uh, right now that one, I was going through my uh, Superman comics, or my, well, basically my countdown comics and various other comics in my, in my counting comics blog, and uh, I saw this Mister Action. But I didn't see any reference, I didn't, didn't remember him like that. But I commented on him in my, in my video, and I saw him on his Action Comics. I thought I'll buy that, and I want to see if I can find out how about, more about who this Mr. Action is. Uh, not a very well conditioned book, but 50p, well, you know, why not? But right, then this one, 
I already own this one, but I just like that cover. I know that this guy, Wild Dog, is in the Arrow uh, TV series now, CW TV series. I'm not sure it's season five. I think it's season five. And when I saw the trailers for it, when you saw the new sort of people in the team, as soon as I saw it, I was like, it's Wild Dog. I was like excited. It's like, I was Wild Dog. I can't believe it. Because, um, not a popular book at all, but I really like the character. I bought the four-parter, uh, you know, when it, as soon as it came out. I had a couple of uh, stories running in a compilation comic with a few different characters all like having their own stories in it. And he, uh, he was one of the uh, titles in that book. I can't remember, it was like Action Comics Presents or something like that, I'm not too sure. But yeah, I always liked him. I was stoked to see him in the uh, the Arrow series. And I thought, well, I wonder if he's worth, you know, the book's worth more now. If that character's caught on with the... You know the comic by in public, but they probably probably haven't to be honest. But yeah, it's, it's a nice cover anyway. I'll keep hold of it. Who knows? Maybe one day Wild Dog will spin off into his own series, and these will sell for hundreds of pounds. <laughs> but I don't think so. But I just like the cheeky little dog. <laughs> All right, here's a Batman Detective comic. So I think I think this is after I stopped collecting. I stopped collecting sometime in 2013, and this might be next in the run that I, when I stopped. I might, or this might be a double. It's possible it's a double, but this is you know, off the same kind of thing. I bought this one because I didn't think I had that. I think that came after I stopped collecting. All right, then we've got, oh, we've got a Detective Comics in the similar vein, actually. No, it should have been the same pilot, isn't it? It's exactly the same run, isn't it? Yeah. So I wasn't sure. Oh, no, it's an 80 page spectacular as well. So. Yeah, 50p. It's, it's not brilliant. It's not crispy or... Yeah, but I don't really mind. Right, now this one is a nice old-looking book. That looks pretty cool. I like that. It's not super old. Probably 70s or something. Or maybe 80. I think I've read it. might be 80. Let me have a quick look if I can find out. But yeah, it's, it's a cool old-school Superman story. Yeah, 1980, yeah. When I was like 10 years old. Well, 11 years old. It's probably about the time I started sort of collecting the odd book here and there. But my earliest books that I still have, that I remembered buying at the time, were from about 1979. So maybe that's when I first started buying. I don't, I don't remember like first buying comics. I'm pretty sure I had like a lot of uh, UK uh, Marvels, which I don't have at all anymore. I think I lost all them. I used to have a load of um, Doctor Who weeklies as well, and they went lost as well when we moved house. Moved house in 1980 actually to where I am now. And uh, I'm just wondering if some comics got lost in the move. Wouldn't surprise me because I don't think I've got any from before that move, to be honest, which is a shame. Right, uh, this one, just because it's staffed, it's just a parody of X Force. <laughs> Buyer Beware, this is nothing but a cheap parody of the best selling comic of all time, X Farce. I've got a feeling I've read that actually. I wondered if I might even have it actually already, but I just saw it and it made me giggle and I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll check it out. <laughs> that looks like Garfield, it must be Garfield there, but Garfield done up as feral. <laughs> yeah, silly stuff. Right, then this last one I got picked up on uh, my little comic shop by is Paranoia, which is an old role-playing game. I actually um, never actually owned Paranoia back in the day, but um, yeah, I always thought it looked quite fun. I saw it like in uh, uh, role-playing game books, and it'd be like role-playing game like, uh, scenarios in them, and I'd read them if it looked quite interesting. And then I actually bought the actual Paranoia game just to read it up and see what it was like. It wasn't as uh, great. It might have been quite fun to play, actually, but to be honest, I haven't got any friends to do role-playing games with now anyway, so it's just a matter of buying it because it was cheap and I wanted to have a look at it. So that's kind of the same with that as well. I thought I'd give it a try, see if it's, see if it's a bit of fun. Might be interesting. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's all the comics that I bought on that little run. Uh, also, I actually went out to buy some more long boxes, which is uh, this one here. <laughs> anyway, cheers for watching. Please subscribe and uh, make any comments if you'd like. And that'd be cool. Cheers.